everybody, welcome back to another episode of Creating a Quick Great Tone, where I revisit some of my old videos and condense them into something a lot shorter and maybe easier to digest. Today we're talking about all the different types of EQs we have in our Helix and how we can use them. So without further ado, let's get started. So this probably looks a little different to you up on your screen. This is a program called Isotope Ozone 9, which is a mastering piece of software, but I wanted to use this because I get a lot of questions asking me what the difference are between the different types of EQs that we have in our Helix. And Ozone 9 gives a very nice visual representation of these things. So let's talk about some of the things we have. One of the first things that people wanna use are high and low cut EQs. Now, those are actually in real terms. And if I click on number one here, you'll, you'll pull down the different type of EQs that we have. High pass and low pass. So we gotta think kind of backwards. High pass filters are like low cuts. They're going to cut it all, they're going to allow all the frequencies above a certain point to pass while cutting off frequencies below. Low pass are going to be the opposite of that. They're going to let all the lower frequencies below our, our set point pass and cutting off the higher frequencies above it. So in the Helix, we have cuts. Now, there's also shelf EQs. Now, one of the biggest points of confusion I come across is people not knowing the difference between shelf and cuts. So a high cut and a low cut versus a high shelf and a low shelf. So if we take something like this high pass, what we see happens is we could set our frequency. A lot of times on the Helix, a lot of folks will set that around 100. Then we can also determine how much it slopes down, how many dBs per octave that's going to cut. So I could have this go up on ozone here to 48 dB per octave. Now that's set in the Helix. We're not gonna be able to adjust that. It is what it is. The low and high cuts in the cab blocks are less severe than the ones in the standalone EQs. So I don't know what the numbers are of those, but I would say, you know, the cab block might be more something like this or this, whereas maybe the EQ blocks are more something like these settings here. Okay, I don't know if it would go up to 48 dB per octave. I've never actually done it. As you see here, the graphical representation shows us what's going on. It's doing a pretty dramatic cut off of all the frequencies below whatever point we have it set at. And the high cut, or in, the, in this case, a low pass would be similar, right? Wherever we set this, if we set it at, uh, you know, 8,000 8, hertz, it's going to very dramatically or somewhat dramatically cut all the frequencies off above that. So how does that differ then from a shelf EQ? Well, let's take a look. So a low shelf EQ is going to be quite different. You see when I switch to that, it really doesn't do anything at all until I start adding more gain to it. And what you'll see is instead of rolling everything off harshly, it just more gradually takes down all the other frequencies below our set point by the same amount. So it's dropping all the frequencies below this roughly 100 hertz setting. Now, if I go really dramatic with it, well, it starts to resemble the low cut or the high pass. But usually we're not using it like that. I'm gonna use it more with some subtle moves, sometimes one or two dB. So you see how different that looks compared to a high pass or a low cut. Same thing over here. If I go up to a high shelf, that's going to boost or cut all the frequencies more looking like an actual shelf. So let's keep these visuals in mind when we do head back over to our Helix. Now another type of EQ that we're going to see is in our parametric EQ. And that's going to be what we call a bell style curve. And you're going to see three different parameters. We're gonna have the frequency we wanna set at, we're going to have how much we wanna boost or cut that frequency, and we're going to have a setting called Q, which is going to determine how many frequencies around the frequency we pick are going to be affected by our boosts and our cuts, right? If I come over here and set this to a thousand hertz or one kilohertz, if I set my Q around 0.7, that's going to tell me that whatever I boost or cut is going to affect frequencies approximately two octaves outside and around the one kilohertz center point that I've set. Now you might say, well, what is an octave? Is it the same thing as on a guitar? The answer is kind of yes, it is, uh, for the frequencies of those notes, right? So very simple math, if I want to go one octave up from one kilohertz, I have to go to two kilohertz. If I wanna go one octave up from two kilohertz, I go up to four kilohertz. One octave up from four kilohertz would be up to eight kilohertz, 
than to 16 kilohertz, okay? So there are bigger jumps as we move higher. To go down an octave from 1000 is going to go down to 500, then to 250, then to 125, and so on and so forth, if that makes sense. If I boost this, you're going to see, if I go in and say, I'm gonna boost this by say four dB, well, we get this bell curve look to it, right? So because I did a Q of 0.7, that's gonna affect the frequencies approximately two octaves out from our center point. So that would be, one octave would be to 2000 Hertz, a second octave would be up to about 4000 Hertz. Okay, and we can see that that's what this is doing. On the other way, it would go from 1000 down to about 500, down to about 250. And we sort of see the graphic representation showing us just that. Now, if we wanted to change our Q to one octave, well, we would simply go to 1.4, roughly. These numbers are not, those numbers aren't exact, but that's roughly the estimate. 0.7 is around two octaves. 1.4 is going to be approximately one octave. And now we see that this curve narrows as the number goes up. So I can go all the way up to a Q of 12, very narrow and almost more to just fix problem areas. If I go the other way, it gets very, very wide. And I think I just moved that by accident. So those are the things we have to know with EQs. Now, let's go back over to the Helix and take a look at how we can actually use this information. First things first, we have these different filters. We have a simple EQ, we have a low and high cut, a low and high shelf, a parametric, a tilt, a 10 band graphic, and a Cal EQ graphic. So what I didn't talk about was the graphic EQ. So with the graphic EQ, we are going to have a set determined number of bands or frequencies that we can adjust, but they're just gonna be sort of dictated to us. These are the frequencies you can cut. We can't adjust the Q. We can basically decide how much or how little we want to turn up or down each frequency. Sometimes that's a really nice, simple way of working. And if we know that we need to boost or cut it, let's say at one kilohertz, then this is going to be a great tool. We can just go in, add a dB or pull a dB out, whatever we need. If we need something more surgical or something we want to kind of actually tweak a little bit more, we're going to be better off with something like the parametric EQ. And much like the EQ I just showed you in ozone, we have our frequency, we have our Q setting, and we have our gain setting. And now we understand a little bit more about how that all works. Now, something like the simple EQ in the Helix is kind of a cross between the two. We have a fixed frequency, which we're not even told what it is, just called low gain. We can boost or cut it. We have to use our ears. We have a mid frequency, which we can choose between 125 Hertz and four kilohertz. No Q though to adjust, so no bandwidth or width of how many frequencies it's gonna take in. And we can boost or cut that. And then another high gain that we really don't know what it is. So we won't touch that one for now, but it's essentially kind of a cross between all of the different types of EQs, uh, but not quite as flexible. But it might be something that works for you. Now the low and high cut is something a lot of folks use. Now I put a separate block in here, but it's also the same block as part of a parametric EQ. But I wanted to use these separate for this video. So I have the low and high cut on my parametric turned off. So we have a low and a high cut. I have it set so it cuts off. And this is like I was saying, the, the low and high pass filters like we saw in ozone. This is going to roll off all the frequencies below 100 Hertz and it's going to roll off all the frequencies above 12 kilohertz to kind of make it a little more usable in a mix. So that's a common thing to do. And I'll just leave those settings. Some people like to go very low with their high cuts. Some people don't like to go so low. It's really gonna be up to us. We gotta be careful not to go too low because then the sound kind of gets dull and won't cut in a mix as well. But that's going to be a personal preference and up to us. Those same low and high cuts also exist in our cab blocks. Now, so we see here it says an 80 hertz low cut and an eight kilohertz high cut, which kind of come baked into the cabinets. I'm gonna get rid of those for our purposes here because I'm already adding those over here at the end, okay? But we, these here are not quite as dramatic a slope from my experience with them as using a separate block. But again, they're very useful. If we're out of blocks, maybe on our HX stomp, Probably better to use the cab blocks and maybe go a little more extreme. But again, that's gonna be up to personal preference and using our ears. For our purposes, we'll shut those off for now. So next we have the parametric EQ. Like I said, we can make our setting of the frequency we want to affect. We can decide how wide or how narrow as I showed you in the visual, and then we can boost or cut that frequency. 
One of my favorite EQs is the shelf EQ like I showed you in Ozone as well, which is just gonna take, like a shelf, all the frequencies above or below a certain frequency and boost or cut those however much we want. And those are nice. I like to use those kind of in a gentle way to just kind of lift the sound. And you'll see, I'll show you some examples in a second how we can utilize that. And then, of course, we have our graphic EQ. And we also have the Cal EQ, which, Cal EQ graphic, which is a five band version of that, I believe from a Mesa Boogie amplifier, but we're not gonna be looking at that one today. It's gonna to essentially do the same thing with some different frequency points as our 10 band graphic would do. Now we do have one other EQ that was not shown as part of Ozone and that's our Tilt EQ. And I would almost say the Tilt EQ is kind of more, leans toward being like a shelf EQ. We're going to pick a center frequency, let's say one kilohertz, and then what's gonna happen when we move the control, the tilt control that's set it flat, meaning it's not doing anything. If I tilt it this way, it's going to make the sound brighter, meaning it's going to kind of tilt all the frequencies above one kilohertz upwards, but it's going to tilt all the frequencies below one kilohertz downwards. So we don't have as much control as a shelf EQ, but it kind of sort of gives a similar effect. So we'd wanna be careful not to go too heavy handed, but what a great tool. If we have a sound that's just too bright, we can just darken it up by rolling this way. If we have a sound that's a little too dark, we can roll it this way. And it's a very powerful tool that we can use uh, if, we, if we need sort of a, a really quick way to, to tweak a, a preset that we have. Okay, so what we do have here, let me show you what I have. I have my little Dynamics uh, processor at the end, the LA Studio Comp. I have a little bit of reverb and delay. I have a Placator Dirty going into a 412 Greenback 25 with a 121 ribbon mic. So Snapshot 1 is gonna be the sound of this with just no uh, EQ at all. Okay, nothing wrong with that. A little dark, maybe a little muddy, might not cut in a mix really well, but an overall pleasant sound. Well, what I did on Snapshot 2 is I added just the shelf EQ in with these settings, boosting all the frequencies above 650 hertz by one dB and cutting all the frequencies below 650 hertz by two dB. So here again, let's compare that. Here it is with no EQ again. <laughs> with just the shelf EQ. Let me go back and forth. Did you notice that? You're gonna have to listen to a good set of headphones or a good speaker system, but it opened the sound up a bit. It cut a little bit of the mud and gave it a little more clarity on the top end. Very nice stuff. Okay, now on Snapshot 3, we're going to go to just the parametric EQ. And with these settings, and again, if you notice, I don't use a sledgehammer. I use very subtle moves for the most part, unless I need to do something more surgical. But I went in here at 180 hertz with a Q of 1.4. So it's gonna handle about one octave on either side of that frequency. And I'm just boosting that by one dB. I'm going to 450 hertz with a Q of 1.4, and I'm pulling that back by two dB. And then I'm going to a high frequency of four kilohertz with a Q of 1.4 again, and I'm boosting that by 0.5 dB. So let's listen to the difference between no EQ and then the para EQ, and just watch up here when the snapshot changes. <laughs> Notice again, the mud is out of it a little bit, a little more clarity on the top end and fullness without being muddy anymore. Now for snapshot number four, I'm gonna combine the settings I had on the parametric EQ and the settings I had on the shelf EQ. So again, watch up here when I switch. I'm gonna start with no EQ and then I'll switch to the para shelf combination. <laughs> Thank you. 
keep in mind, all of these still have our low and our high cut block. Okay, so I hope you're hearing that difference and what some subtle moves on these EQs can really do. And finally, we're gonna go to our graphic EQ with these settings. A tiny boost of 0.5 dB at 125 Hertz, a little bigger boost of 1 dB at 250 Hertz. I'm gonna pull 2.5 dB out of 500 Hertz and I'm gonna boost four kilohertz by 1.4 dB. Let's listen to no EQ and then we'll go to the graphic. <laughs> Did you hear again how it opened up, retained its fullness, got rid of a little bit of mud, but still had nice clarity to it. So let's run through all of these back to back and just sort of hear the difference between them all, starting with no EQ. I think after we hear those, when we go back to the no EQ and it kind of sounds a little muddy. We see how that would need a little bit of work in the mix possibly, right? Now, a lot of folks will say, oh, you know, when I did my other EQ videos, oh, I can't believe you'd boost at four kilohertz or I can't you believe that. It really depends on what you're starting with. Sometimes the worst thing in the world you could do is boost at four kilohertz. But what I find a lot of times, I love ribbon mics. Ribbon mics tend to be dark. Ribbon mics need a little bit of help sometimes in the upper mids and upper end. And to put those frequencies in on a ribbon mic is a real thing of beauty at times in the right situation. So that's why I go make those decisions. What do you guys think? I hope I didn't ramble too long for a quick video, but there was quite a bit to cover and I hope I didn't glaze over anything too fast. I do have an original creating a great tone series video all about EQs and it's a long video, but it goes very in depth. So I'll put the link to that below. If you have any other questions of something I may have skipped over in this video, please go watch that one. This one was designed to be a little more condensed and I hope I covered everything. And I hope that answers some of the questions of the difference between these different types of EQs we have at our disposal. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. Please share it with anybody who you think would get use out of it. Like the video if you don't mind. Subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out and I will be back really soon with some more. Thanks again for tuning in guys and ciao for now.